Hi, this is Doug, and welcome to my uh, new hobby, or a recent hobby anyway, of uh, working with glass, creating some of these interesting sculptures, most of which I call totems. There have been a lot of people who have gone to my website and my blog uh, through Pinterest and others um, to look at the designs I've done, so I thought, well, maybe I ought to put together a um, short video about how I put this together. Now, I didn't originate this. A friend of mine, Barb, uh, brought me a stacked glass sculpture, and uh, I thought it was really cool. So a couple of years ago, I thought I would try my hand at it. Mostly what I do is um, go to thrift stores to find what I need and uh, really never pay very much for any of these glass pieces. But... Um, I find that it's a little more difficult to find them these days uh, than it used to be. But I keep looking, and every once in a while, you'll find just the right components. Okay, so today I'm going to work on something that's going to be sort of a fountain bird bath uh, with some solar lights in it. So let me explain what we do. Um, <clears throat> one of the things you want to do, first of all, when you have a piece of glass that you're going to work with, is get it as clean as you can because some of these inner surfaces are not going to be available to you once you get it sealed up. For this piece, um, I found a nice heavy base. It looks like it used to be a uh, something of a big ice bucket for Belvedere vodka. Its uh, drawings on it are a little scraped up, but for my purposes, that's okay. Um, the glass is in good shape. It's very heavy. It makes a good base. So in looking at how to construct these, what you want to do is, well, at least what I do, is have actually a pretty good assortment of pieces to work with, and then kind of just carefully stack them and recombine them and play around with the pieces to see what will work. So, since I've done one similar to this before, um, I kind of know what I want. I want a heavy base. I've got a uh, punch bowl and uh, I have a plate that I'm going to try to work into all of this, along with some solar, uh, they call them fairy lights, that I'm going to put inside it too. All right, so here's how we go. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll kind of play around with the pieces. Um, most of the time, I'll put a plate on top of something like this. Kind of depends how patterned it is as to how smooth a uh, bind I can get on here. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out which way to go. I like a lot of times with my plates to be up. Trouble is they catch a lot of um, debris, water, that sort of thing, and they tend to look kind of yucked up after a while. All right, so one possible placement would be like this. Um, I don't mind that. I tried a number of other plates that I had. Uh, you kind of have to get everything in proportion, at least to my way of thinking. You can't overwhelm. I have a couple of larger plates uh, that look like they overwhelmed it. I had some that uh, sort of semi-bowl types that really kind of overshadowed the base. Let's see if we can line this up. Now, one of the things I find to ha be very helpful is having a turntable to to use to make sure that you're getting everything centered up. You can rotate around and you can see, oops, I'm a little off on one side. Okay, that seems to be pretty well placed. If we can put our blue bowl on top. To me, that looks good. Um, with the downward facing um, plate, it um, means I'm not going to be collecting pine straw and leaves and that sort of stuff in here as much. And I won't be catching water. And I think that's okay. So we're going to be putting that together in just a moment. I also had this blue piece, uh, which I thought, hmm, I've got two choices on this. I can either put it in the center for a little extra interest color-wise. Um, I might be able to fasten it to the underside but that's kind of hard to imagine and I think that would kind of get lost 
if unless you were looking from the side. So I think I'm probably going to put that down in the center. Okay, the sequence of assembling all of this is that I think I'll put this down in the center first. Then I think I'll attach my plate to my bowl. And when that's pretty well dried, or when I feel like it's it's fairly well stuck, I'm going to put my uh, silicone around this rim after I put my uh, fairy lights in and then seat it all together. Now, one of the things that I do, I found, I've checked a couple of different things. One of the things that works for me is 100% silicone uh, caulk. Now, let's get this ready. Okay. What I said we're going to do is put our blue in the center first. So, again, you've got to make sure you're as clean as possible. Okay, we're back. Sorry I had to clean that off and as well as ask the dog not to bark. Okay, what we want to do here is put just a bead of this silicone around the rim. You're really good if you can get that bead around all in one turn, but that's not usually the case. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, this is tricky because it's inside and you're not going to have a whole lot of maneuvering, but you want to try to find the center, which looked like it from the side, but not straight up and down. And again, I could spin it around if everything's fairly centered and I can see. Now, we just want to make sure our seal is good. Sometimes you have to twist it a little bit. You can, I'm not going to worry too much because this is inside and it's really not going to be seen that much. You can run your finger around to smooth out the uh, edge of the silicone caulk, but sometimes I find I make it worse. So we'll leave that for now and we'll move on to step two. So we're going to let that dry. Ultimately, your pieces, I think you need to let dry a day, maybe two, if you really want to be sure everything dried well. Uh, in this case, we're going to at least give it a couple hours to make sure that gets sealed because actually it's going to be contained inside here and we want to be sure that everything gets a chance to dry. All right, on to my plate. Let's make sure you can see this. Okay. Since I think I'm going to do this with the plate facing down, I'm going to put it on my turntable, Lazy Susan, just to make sure it's pretty well centered. I'm going to put the plate on it, but I want to just have a look before I put any silicon on to see what I'm dealing with. Um, the bowl, that's very flat. Sometimes you have a, a ring. This is fairly flat. It's got a little bit of a lip. So I'm just kind of curious. Sometimes they rock and roll in those if they don't fit exactly right. It looks pretty good. So my choices are to put my silicon on this or since I've got a little bit of a rim here, put it on the highest point. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the plate at the highest point so that I know I have good contact. So let's do that. Again, it's a lot easier when you've got something like a turntable Lazy Susan, because you can just kind of hold your caulk and spin the plate or spin the glass device. Okay. Now I've got a bead of my silicone. Let's see if I can't get this. All right, 
I put it down. I'm spinning just to double check. In that case, okay, for now we're going to let this dry so that this is stuck on that pretty securely. That's fastened in. We'll come back and we'll put our lights in and we'll put this plate on top and we'll seal that. Okay, while I'm waiting for some of my new pieces to dry, what I'm going to do is show you um, what sometimes happens when um, you've had some of your glass sculptures outside for a while and things happen. You, know, you get uh, branches that fall out of a tree and coincidentally just happen to hit your glass. Um, in my case, I've, we've got deer that run through the backyard, so every once in a while they'll get frisky and knock some of them over. Um, I've banged into a couple accidentally while doing some yard work and knocked them over. Um, and we've had uh, some damage, again, from branches that knocked some of them, my hanging pieces down. So you've always got repairs. It could be you get uh, water intrusion and you get some frost heave and one of them breaks. Um, so here are some examples of some repairs I've got to make. Um, in, in this case, I find that crackle glass looks really cool in some of these pieces, but it doesn't always hold up real well. It, it's already uh, fractured and ready to break if it gets banged or we get some frost damage or something or ice damage. So that one's going to have to be taken off and replaced somehow. Um, I've got this is one of my hanging ones that it's upside down right now, but it got knocked down. I had a a rack of them and that a branch hit and banged up a few. So we'll see what we can salvage from that. Of course, you don't have to. Um, you could just toss them and start over, but I like to try and repair best I can. I think this is one we're going to work with right now. If, uh, hang on, let me get one. This is an example of a finished one that um, I haven't really put out yet. It's been hanging here in the garage, but in that case, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get it finished today, but what I use to hang these are the only kind of hooks that I can find. Um, they're usually for hanging lamps from the ceiling or planters and that sort of thing. But for the most part, if it's a relatively lightweight piece, uh, if they're sealed on really good, they're usually enough to hold with a piece of um, either a hook or some chain to a hook. Uh, but that's that's an idea I came up with when thinking about, gosh, everything we have in the way of these totems is always ground up. What if we could do some that could hang? And as you can see, some of the best pieces are martini glasses or, um, in this case, different kinds of water glasses um, That as a good start. Some nice, if you can find crystal, um, I know it seems crazy to use lead crystal, but if you find oddball sets in a thrift store or you happen to have some that you're never going to use again, they hold up really well uh, and they make for some nice um, profiles. Anyway, um, let's see what we can do with this. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole procedure, but what happened here was obviously it fell down, the stem snapped off, and I'm going to have to replace it with something and another and another hook to hang. So my thinking is I have these water glasses that are kind of in the same color scheme. So I think if I take this uh, ice cream glass off and replace it with this, I think we'll be back in business. Um, so I'll just show you how we get started, but it can be sort of a long process. So I won't show you everything. You want to basically unseal your silicone uh, layer. So using a, I use a razor blade or an exacto knife or okay, some loose ones here to kind of cut through that silicone layer. Again, turntable comes in handy if you're spinning around, but you've got to, depending on how sharp your razor is and how much silicon you put in there, you're going to have to kind of go around a few times and go over it enough to where 
you can break your seal. And you know, it's a razor blade, so take care that you're not cutting yourself. And always be careful with your glass that you know where any broken edges are and you're not cutting yourself on those. All right, well, this is just kind of showing you that we can begin to peel out and try and wedge underneath. Trouble is, I do this stuff so well that when I have to undo it, it's not easy. Okay, I'm going to pause it. I'll come back when I've taken this piece off. Okay, we have removed... It was a little tricky because uh, there was a good seal on the silicon here. Um, but I removed the broken piece. And the next step you want to do is to try and get as much of the old uh, silicon off as possible. And again, I find the best thing to use is a razor blade. Again, be careful. Um, and you don't want to be getting anything in your flicked into your eyes. You don't want to be getting cut. It is glass. Okay. So we're going to try and clean that off best we can. And then we're going to take a look. And of course, you know, if you're doing some of these repairs, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and clean up the piece anyway, because you leave these, you might not be putting yours outside. They might be inside, in which case they just get dusty. But if, if these are outside, they get grimy. And, you know, if you want them to sparkle, you got to kind of once a year at least go out and rinse them off and clean them up. Okay, so what we're going to do while I'm sitting here wiping this down is uh, to take and see what our possible um, other uh, re replacement parts might do or how they might work on this okay again the, you want to get the silicon off especially in the areas where you're going to be reapplying it and if it's in an area that you're going to see you want to make sure that it's you know a blem it's not a blemish there on the glass okay hang on let me shake out some of the bits that I had okay so I was thinking, trouble is, again, as I said, a lot of this is all in proportion. So I don't want to be over, you know, I don't want to overwhelm the piece. Ideally, what we should have here, the next piece should be a slim, to me, an, a slim tapered uh, wine glass. But I don't happen to have one of those at the moment. So let's look at that. I don't know how well you can see. I mean, it, to me, it works with the colors. It becomes a, it becomes a little top-heavy um, to the point where, you know, it could almost be here, but that's, that's silly. Um, but given that I don't really think I have another piece that will work with it, um, I think we give this a go. And then, so we're going to put a silicone bead there between the two pieces where I just took them apart. And... Get that set. The next thing we do, this happens to be the hanger that was with it. We'll clean out the silicon that was there and put a good solid bead of that in place and get that piece on there and then you'll be able to hang it. Now I find, oddly enough, these don't, at the hanger point, these don't necessarily hang vertically. So I usually have to take a little rat tail file and put a notch in so that that's where it's hanging from. It seems as though once you put some weight on it, this is not the, doesn't give you the true center of gravity the way that, way that will. Okay. All right. I'm going to pause it and uh, we'll come back when we're done. Well, we're not done, but I went and looked at my pieces. I've got some other choices here. I have a a glass piece that could work that way. Um, this one, I just cleaned these off. That one actually f fits over the little rim on our saucer fairly well. And that doesn't look bad to me either. I don't know how well you can see that, but proportionally 
that's not bad. And of course, these um, facets should be really pretty. This matches up. Darn, I really haven't found a use for these water goblets yet, but it seems like I should. So I, I kind of think that wouldn't be bad. It's fairly slender and delicate. Um, even though I was hoping to do a use this for a tabletop one. That's not bad either. I don't know if you can see. It's a, a little heavier, but uh, this is, you know, the way the process goes. You trial and error, you try to figure out what looks best. Actually, I think this one looks best to me, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. As I said, I just washed these earlier. So I'm going to do that for you. One of the things, as I mentioned, I, I go to thrift shops, Goodwill, a lot. And when I first started this a couple years ago, it was not at all difficult to find some interesting pieces. And I think at times they had some surplus that was given to them from some of the, the decorating stores. So you had some interesting vases and bowls. I'm not seeing that as much now. So I don't know whether they're not getting those surplus donations or whether somebody's getting there really ahead of the game or, you know, early, earlier than me. Or I, there's another thrift shop up the road. I kind of think sometimes they go and snare some good deals and... <laughs> Then mark them up, put them in their spot. All right, I'm going to try to get this centered. I have the piece below it. I can see the rim fairly well, so it's easy to get it. All right, again, you want to push down. You may have noticed it sort of we had an air bubble pop out. So that's good. Then the next thing you do, that I do, you could leave it alone, but I'll spin it. And just lightly run my finger on the bead. Just to be sure I've sealed it in there best I can. Okay, I don't know. How... Well, as I said, I found a white hook. I took my rat tail file, got a notch in it there. Don't want to go so deep that I compromise the uh, hook, but these are not especially heavy, so I think we'll be all right. Run a good bead of your silicon in there. All right, I'm thinking that's not enough. Center it up. And I think we're good. You kind of have to sometimes just look at it from the side. You know, and I've learned with glass, especially when you put things upside down, you know, rim side down, that it's not an exact size. You can almost see when you look at some of these that clearly it's not going to be exactly parallel to the base. It'll be close, but they aren't always as... And it shows up when you turn it upside down and you're expecting it to all be perfectly vertical and they'll lean to one side or the other depending on how they cut the rim uh, when they were doing the glass blowing. And the more rustic these are, the more you tend to get pieces that aren't exactly perfect. But that's okay. You can kind of adjust some of that with your silicon, but ultimately it is what it is, and you um, you live with it. Okay, this one's done. We're still waiting on my earlier pieces to dry. I might see if I've got something else we can work on uh, in the meantime. Okay, we're back with the project we were working on that was the, going to be the um, bird bath at fountain 
Um, the large ice bucket, I guess, um, that we have that's very heavy, will work well as a base. Uh, what we did was we put uh, another blue glass piece I had inside that and uh, the silicon on that has dried enough that it's not going anywhere. As I said, this looks like it was from, it's got a, uh, ooh, somewhere on there, it has an etching Belvedere vodka, so it was clearly a meant for a bottle of Belvedere, but we're gonna try something different. And then I found, I thought this might be fun, found these glass beads. I wanted to see what they might look like if I just popped a few of those in the base for fun. I know they're not the same color, but it's giving a kind of an interesting little take on things. Let's see. I don't want to put too many in there, but they're just going to be loose in the base just for a little interest. And since I found one, <laughs> one dark blue and one clear, Marble. I thought, ah, a little yin and yang. We'll put those in. Just for that. I'm going to leave these loose. Um, all right. That's probably good enough. All right. There and there. The next thing we want to put in there is going to be our solar lights. Now this, these are these little grains of rice lights, they call them fairy lights. They're on a copper wire. I tried to pull it apart best I could so it would fill the space. And we are going to have to allow for that. I'm going to take a piece of tape. I think what I want to make sure is that I get, even though it's has a heavier coating on it, I think I want to make sure the stronger part of the wire is outside. Okay, let's see. That should look random enough. That's also kind of disguising the fact that some of these um, decals of the trees are not exactly there. Um, okay, so we're set with that. What we're going to do is put our plate on top of it. I've got to put enough caulking around here that it allows for that uh, spot where the wire comes through. is that it will get water intrusion. Now, a couple of us have talked about this and tried to figure it out. We kind of said, well, maybe it's because we trapped humidity in there when we were doing it, but it's just the differences in the hot and cold. It's like your double pane windows. They lose their seal because air expands and then it contracts and it pulls in the moisture with it. So at some point you're gonna end up with some water inside. Okay, this is the bowl and plate assembly we had. <sighs> okay. It's hard and I can't look down on top of it, but I'm trying to remember where that rim was. Now, let's go for a spin and see how we did. I think it's looking pretty good. I'm looking at my the sides of my um, base, making sure they look like they're evenly spaced around the plate. I think they are. I'm going to push down a little bit to make sure. We have a seal. Okay, 
looking through the glass. I think we're good. That looks like that should do pretty good. Um, it'll have the the lights inside there kind of do a twinkling when uh, the sun goes down, and that looks really cool. And then we'll be able to put water in here. As I said, I have a, a floating uh, fountain that sits in there. It gets a little um, vigorous, but it's fun, and it's solar too.